My name is Ms. Gwendol. I am leading today's virtual workshop on understanding business majors. I am joined by Scott Ezel of UMKC and the UMKC Block School. I will let us both introduce ourselves here momentarily, but thank you so much for joining us. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, please feel free to save this video by adding it to your likes or just adding it to your channel. And yeah, let's go ahead and get started. And if I, if I haven't already mentioned, this is led by the Kansas State College Advising Corps, and it is specifically, but not only, for um, KC Scholars. So welcome to my KC Scholar friends. So today's session, what we're going to talk about, first, we're going to meet the speakers, which are me and Scott, and then we're going to be discussing the types of business degrees and majors versus minors. So we're going to go into a little bit of detail about that. Then Scott will be taking over by introducing us to the UMKC Block School and what they can offer you if you are interested in pursuing a degree in business. And we will follow up by answering any of the Q&A questions which are submitted to that Q&A feature on Zoom. But yeah, just to introduce myself, my name is Ms. Gwendol. I am a hybrid college advisor with the Kansas State College Advising Corps. I specifically serve KC Scholars. And so it's wonderful to see some of my students in this room today. Um, but yeah, Scott, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, my name is Scott Ezel. I direct undergraduate admissions and recruitment for the Block School. So that's a long way of saying I help students that are in high school or at other colleges or universities find their way into our business school. And I also get them plugged in or connected to all the different resources that are available to students here at the UMKC Block School of Management. Yeah, and apologies for mispronouncing your last name. Um, but yeah, um, just to let you guys know, I was actually a graduate of UMKC, not the Block School, unfortunately. I actually um, was interested in pursuing a business degree, but like some of you may be, I was very confused of what a business degree actually entailed. So I'm really glad to be able to provide this opportunity for anyone watching this or anyone joining us tonight to learn more in detail of what getting a business degree actually entails, because it can be a pretty confusing topic, especially when looking at higher education. But let's go ahead and get started. So just a brief overview, what is a business degree? And this is a very brief overview. This could be multiple slides, which Scott is going to go into more detail when he starts sharing his screen. Um, but a business degree provides a cross-functional overview of business operations or can focus on one particular area of business. So think maybe accounting, finance, econ, stuff like that, or courses like that. Business degrees are offered at all levels of higher education. So this means associates, bachelors, and masters, but there are a couple of things to look out for, which we will discuss momentarily. And also business degrees are one of the most common fields of study across all degree levels. In fact, 18.9% of all bachelor's degrees conferred to students are actually in the business field which is quite astounding depending, like just think about all the students who actually graduate college. You might think it's health sciences, but business degrees are up there and that's quite impressive. So to go in a little bit more detail about what the types of business degrees available are, associate's degrees. These are your two year programs focusing on areas such as business administration or management. However, it is recommended to pursue an associate of art if you plan to transfer to a four-year school. Scott, do you maybe want to talk a little bit more about that and why it's important to only focus on the associates of art instead of an associates of business administration? Yeah, so I think this can be a little confusing for students as they're pursuing whatever they want to pursue career-wise and how education fits into that. And so if you plan to go to a community college first or a two-year school, Generally, you have lots of options available to you in terms of degrees you can pursue. An Associate of Arts is really kind of a lot of general education coursework and maybe a little bit of something that's specific to business or accounting or marketing or something that you want to pursue as a career. And those Associate of Arts degrees, because they're so general in nature, tend to be really transfer friendly. So they will transfer to other four-year schools better than say something that's really heavy in business or accounting, but only a little bit of general education. Those tend to be uh, degrees that are called Associate of Applied Sciences degrees. And the applied part is really important and it stands out because 
they're applied towards a certain type of path that you may want to pursue. So you might think to yourself, I want to do an associate of applied sciences in marketing, as an example, and that that would be the best option for you, even if you wanted to go on and do a four-year degree. However, you actually want more of that general stuff that you would otherwise take during the first two years at a university that's a part of your four-year degree, and then take the degree-specific stuff or the stuff that's specific to marketing during the final two years. And so students that do a lot of that real specific stuff during the first two years, a lot of those credits don't end up transferring the way that they want them to. They only count as elective credit whenever they come to the university. And so it's really important to know first and foremost what the degree options are that are available to you if you go to a two-year school. But also you wanna be having conversations with the university that you're thinking about transferring to to make sure that the degree selection that you're making at the community college is the best fit for then that transfer over to the universities that interest you. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that, Scott, because I know when I was looking at going to college, I was so confused of, okay, they said, that you could transfer from a two-year school to a four-year school, but what degree do I actually choose to transfer? So it's really great just to have some of that background information. Yeah, so, yeah. I'll, I'll also add, um, make sure that you're comfortable with asking questions because I think mm -hmm. it's really important that when you go to meet with an, an academic advisor, as an example, uh, at a community college, if you choose to do that, or at a university for that matter, that you are asking the right questions. And those are things that we can help coach you on as you go through this process to try and determine exactly where it is that you might want to go to college. Yeah, that's a great point. Yes, definitely get comfortable with being uncomfortable when it comes to asking questions. When it comes to higher education and looking at your options after high school, there are no dumb questions. You need to be asking the questions to make sure you understand what you are looking at or what you are possibly um, planning to enroll in. So never feel bad for asking a question that you think may have a straightforward answer. But yeah, and then moving on from associate's degrees, you have bachelor's degrees. These are four to five year programs. It depends how many credit hours you take or choose to take. Obviously you're recommended to take full time which is traditionally at least 12 credit hours, but obviously situations can differ from student to student. And these programs uh, focus on any area of business such as accounting, economics, entrepreneurship, management, and a lot more options, including international business, which is one area that I was actually interested in getting into. Um, but there's a lot of different opportunities out there. And we'll get a little bit more into the detail of what bachelor's degrees actually look like when it comes to business when uh, Scott starts sharing his presentation. And of course, masters, perhaps you are interested in further expanding your education even more so than a bachelor's degree. Um, you can definitely do that within the field of uh, business. However, keep in mind there are some specialized programs. Uh, you obviously have the common MBA program, um, but yeah, there's a lot of um, specific information that pertains to each master's program. So it'd be too much to get into today. Um, but definitely something to consider down the road if you're interested in furthering your education. So yes, majors versus minors. This can be a very important subject, but also one that can kind of induce some anxiety because you're like, oh, I want to focus in so-and-so, but how many classes do I actually have to take in it? And as everything else in higher education, this can differ from program to program and school to school. Um, so once again, get comfortable asking questions to your specific school that you're looking at. Um, we'll of course be talking a little bit about UMKC's programs tonight, but just be careful to ask those questions to any potential school you're looking at attending. Just some general information though, majors are your core specializations. Students typically take a certain number of credits in general education, but a majority of the coursework will come within the degree specific coursework areas. Um, so for instance, I majored in political science. I don't remember the specific number of credit hours I needed to get that major, but most of my coursework was within the political science department. So just make sure when you choose a major, it, it tend to actually take a fair amount of cl um, classes within that major. Minors on the other hand, this allows for an additional area of focus during your degree. It typically requires less than 20 credit hours, but once again, can differ from program to program and from school to school. 
and it may or may not be mentioned on your actual physical diploma. It will, of course, be listed on your transcript. So whenever you get your transcript after graduating from university, it will list your minors, but it may not be listed on your diploma itself. And just to kind of give you all an understanding, obviously, as KC scholars, uh, you have access to the schools within the KC Scholars Network with your traditional award or any of your match award incentive dollars. Um, the universities listed on this slide all within the network, and they do have business specific courses and programs. Some more than others. Um, it really just depends on the size of the school and the size of the business program itself. Um, and of course, as Scott mentioned, be careful if you're looking at any of the community colleges such as JCCC, KCKCC, or MCC, that you do notate, oh, if I want to actually transfer to a four-year school, I need to be looking at those two-year Associates of Arts programs, um, usually in liberal arts, that will allow you to transfer more equitably to a four-year school without losing out on all those credits you've already earned. Yeah, but I am going to go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And Scott, feel free to share yours. Yeah. In just one second here and I'll get us started. Mm -hmm. Okay, are you guys able to see? Yes. All right, perfect. Um, so again, I help students kind of navigate this whole process of figuring out whether or not business school is a good fit for them. And then even beyond that, whether or not the, the Block School of Management is a good fit for them. I'll start first by mentioning why we are the Block School of Management. So um, you'll notice Henry W. Block School of Management is our the name of our school. And the reason for that is because Henry Block um, was our benefactor. He actually founded H&R Block. So if you've ever heard of H&R Block, it's the largest tax preparation firm in the world. Henry is one of the most well-known entrepreneurs, not only here in the Kansas City area, but around the country and around the world. And his uh, his family and his family's found he and his family's foundation got involved with the school back in the mid '80s, and have been involved with the school in a variety of different ways, really ever since then. So we carry the Block name for that reason. What I'm going to share with you, though, is just some kind of basic information about our degree programs. And I'll first mention um, we have two. We have our Bachelor of Business Administration and we have our Bachelor of Science and Accounting. Both of those degrees require 120 hours of college credit. So it's essentially 40 classes that you're going to take in order to earn your bachelor's degree in business or your bachelor's degree in accounting. And really what we try and do is we try and keep students in about 10 classes each calendar year over the course of a four-year period. So that gets you to your 40 classes or your 120 hours of college credit that you need. And that can look different for each student. So you may decide, I don't want to take summer classes. So I'm going to take five classes in the fall and five classes in the spring. And that's going to get my 10 in over that calendar year. Or if you want to kind of reduce your course load in fall and spring, you could take some summer classes to make up, you know, however many courses that you don't take in the fall and spring. It's also important to know that if you're bringing in college credit from high school, so it could be dual credit through another college or university, it could be AP credit or IB credit, those credits are likely going to count in some way towards the completion of your degree. So that can allow you to either graduate early if you have credit that you're bringing in from high school, or it can allow you to reduce the amount of credit hours that you take in the fall or spring semesters and make the course load a little bit more manageable. Our academic advisors are the ones that really kind of help students navigate that process. But in terms of knowing kind of how the credits that you've earned are going to apply to either of these degrees, that's kind of part of my job in the sense that I help students figure out, does the accounting class that you took at MCC cover the accounting requirement towards the business degree or towards the accounting degree? Um, so I help students navigate those processes all the time to kind of make this a little bit more manageable, because what I've found is that educating students and helping them be informed about the decisions they're making really, really helps them towards completing their degree and graduating in a time frame that they want to graduate in. So I talk a little bit about bachelor's degrees, but we also offer minors and certificates in the business school here. And these are really meant for students that are not in the business school, but want some kind of business education. So they could be a political science major, like Ms. Grendel mentioned, and they want to add, maybe they want to start a business. Uh, and so entrepreneurship minor could be a good option there. Or maybe it is an engineering major that has a prototype for something that they want to figure out how to turn that into a business. 
that could be the entrepreneurship minor. It could be the technology innovation and management certificate uh, or things like that. And then we have the business minor, which is more general. So if you just know, I have an interest in business, I want to learn a little bit more about what it's like, but I'm majoring in communication studies, as an example. Uh, the business minor might be good because it'll add some skills in accounting and marketing and finance and organizational behavior and entrepreneurship. So you get a little bit of flavor of all these different kinds of business. So there's all of these different things that you can do there with regard to the classes we offer, the degrees we offer. I will mention, since we've talked a little bit about going to the community college first, um, for these two different bachelor's degree programs, you can complete more than half of the 120 hours of college credit taking community college coursework and then transferring to UMKC. However, I will say that in certain circumstances, if a student is going to qualify for a full ride scholarship coming directly from high school and coming straight to the business school versus going to maybe a community college first, it would make more sense to do that versus bypassing that opportunity, going to the community college first and then coming here and maybe not having as much scholarship potential. So really what I'm getting at is you want to compare apples to apples as you're comparing different colleges. You want to be looking at a variety of different factors, cost being one of them, um, but you really want to know how much that you could potentially get from each school and scholarships and how much you may end up paying out of pocket over the course of the long term of your college education. I think those are really important elements to, number one, ask questions about, but also just have a firm understanding of as you're, as you're going through the college planning process. So those are our degrees. And to break those down even more so, um, the slide that I have up here breaks down the Bachelor of Business Administration and the Bachelor of Science and Accounting in terms of the number of students that are in both of those programs. So business is much larger. And the reason for that is, number one, a lot of students don't really know that they like accounting or that they're good at accounting until they get into a, an accounting course. But also business encompasses all of these different what we call emphasis areas. And I will note that each college and university, their programs can look and feel a little bit different in terms of how they structure that. So ours, if you're doing a business degree, you're doing a Bachelor of Business Administration, and then you're going to choose an emphasis area at some point. So that could be supply chain or marketing or health or real estate or finance. So inside this circle here, you can see a breakdown of all of our different emphasis areas and how many students that we currently have in those different emphasis areas. The one that I always point out, and I think it's most important to point out, is the general or undeclared at the bottom. So we have 169 business majors in the business school at UMKC that haven't decided which of these emphasis areas that they want to pursue. And so there's lots of things that they're going to do over the course of the time that they're here to figure out which one of those is going to be the best fit for them career-wise. So that could be attending career center events that we have. It could be interacting with professors or other classmates. It could be going out into different businesses and talking to people that are in roles at different companies. So there's all of these different kinds of experiences that are going to kind of shape and inform what students want to do with their emphasis area later on in their college career. I'll also point out on the right, you'll see we have about 20,000 graduates of the business school and about 10,000 of them are concentrated here in Kansas City. So that really lends well to our student success because they're basically plugging themselves into a network of more than 10,000 people here in the Kansas City Metro that can help them with internships, can be mentors for them, that may hire them for their first full-time position after they graduate. So you're kind of plugging yourself into a really robust network of employers that's already here for you to take advantage of. Next, some other high-level figures. We have more than 60 full-time faculty members. Most of our faculty are industry experience. So the people that are teaching our courses or the people that you're going to be learning from, these are folks that have been there and that have done it. So they've been successful. They've been executives. They've started companies. And the way that they teach their courses is they want you to have a practical knowledge of you know, certain concepts that are going to be applicable in the business world, but they want you to know how to be able to apply them. And so you're going to do a lot of case studies. You're going to do a lot of project-based learning that's really focused on putting into practice what you're learning in the classroom. You can also see our class sizes there. So you're going to get to know your classmates because our classes are relatively small. In fact, a third of our courses are 20 students or fewer. So you're going to get to know pretty much everybody in your class, and you're going to have direct access to be able to get help from your professor or have that professor maybe serve as a mentor for you. 
We also give away over a million and a half dollars in scholarships to students every single year. So there's lots of opportunities for that. And I'll talk a little bit more about scholarships here in a second. We're an AACSB accredited school. So if you wonder what is accreditation, accreditation is basically the standard that schools or programs are held to that's essentially showing that it's a certain quality, right? So AACSB, only the only 5% of business schools worldwide have that. So us, Mizzou, KU, K-State, Rockhurst, those are kind of schools that are close to us here that you might be familiar with. But other schools that you've probably heard of, like Harvard, Yale, Cornell, Northwestern, kind of globally known business schools are also AACSB accredited. And that doesn't mean that we're the same school or the same type of school. It just means that we have a certain standard that we're held to in terms of how we support students. And it's really important as you're looking at business schools in particular that you look for a quality accreditation that's aligned with the business schools that you're interested in. So I think that's really important too. Next up is scholarships. There's lots of different scholarships out there. Um, there's independent scholarships that aren't tied to any college or university. And then all most colleges and universities have their own scholarships for students. So I'm going to kind of highlight some of the ones that are available to uh, prospective UMKC students or, or even students that are here at the university. The first type is called automatics, meaning if you meet the criteria, you automatically get the money. So kind of looking at those, and I will mention first that tuition at UMKC is generally about twelve dollars to $13,000 per year. And it's really dependent on how many credit hours you take because tuition is charged per credit hour. It also can depend on what your major is and maybe some of those additional fees that can be added on based on the type of technology you might need or different variety of factors depending upon your major. But rule of thumb, about twelve dollars to $13,000 per year. So as you look at our scholarships here, you're going to notice these are automatic, meaning if you meet the criteria, you get the money. So in that top tier, as an example here, if you have a 28 or above ACT or a 3.75 or above high school core GPA, you don't need both. You just need one or the other. You qualify automatically for $5,000 a year in scholarship. And so right off the top of that twelve dollars to $13,000, you reduce your, your amount that you're going to have to come up with significantly just with one scholarship and it's automatic. All you have to do is apply to UMKC and gain admission to the university. Certain programs at UMKC, um, like our School of Medicine, as an example, they may not offer these scholarships the same way that other more traditional four-year programs offer them. So it's also important to know that if you want to go to the School of Medicine at UMKC, as an example, you should probably meet with someone like me in the School of Medicine that can tell you about scholarship opportunities that are unique to that department. But again, if you're coming to UMKC, these are automatic. So there's really great opportunities for students to reduce their tuition just with one automatic scholarship right off the bat. There's also exclusive scholarships for Excuse certain- me? Yes. I got a question. How about if you weren't able to, how about if you're not attending the school? If you're not attending UMKC? Yes. So these are scholarships that are just for UMKC students. So you would apply for them whenever you're coming into the university. And then as you go through college, you would continually receive these as long as you maintain the eligibility requirements. Does that answer your question, Judith? Yes. Okay. So next up is exclusive scholarships, and these are also automatic. And you'll notice here we have the Metro Kansas City High School Award. It's an automatic scholarship for students that graduate from KCPS or KCKPS high schools. We also have district high school scholarships for students that graduate from KCPS or from the North Kansas City School District. And I will mention that you can stack the Metro Kansas City Award with the district high school scholarship. Also, if you're Pell eligible, meaning if you qualify for federal Pell Grant, you would receive automatically the Rue Advantage Scholarship, which covers all of your remaining tuition and fee gap after all of your other scholarships are applied. So in short, if you are Pell eligible uh, and you're from Missouri or Kansas and you gain admission by April 1st and submit the FAFSA by April 1st, the Rue Advantage Scholarship would be available to you and you would come to UMKC for free. So that's a really great opportunity for students that, you know, are Pell eligible. And that's something that you find out after you submit the FAFSA. Next up is automatic scholarships for transfer students. And since we've talked a little bit about, um, you know, going to a two-year school and then potentially transferring UMKC, I think this is really important in that context. 
because in all honesty, about 40% of our students every year in the business school are transfer students. So they're coming from other colleges or universities, oftentimes coming from a community college. And so these are scholarships that if you meet the criteria, you automatically get the money, but these are for transfers versus students coming directly from high school. I get the question often, if I have a lot of college credit that I've earned while I'm in high school, am I considered a transfer student? So I hear that all the time. So if you have, you know, any number of, of, of transfer, uh, transfer hours, credit hours or college credits that you've earned while you're in high school, but you haven't taken them post high school graduation, meaning you've taken them while you're in high school and not after, then you're still considered a first time college student. So you would still qualify for first time college student scholarships. It's really only when you take a college class or classes after your high school graduation, so in like a fall semester or a spring semester, at that point, that's when you're considered a transfer student. And then you fall into the transfer student scholarships population. And so you'll see for these, uh, for most of them anyway, you need at least 24 hours of transferable credit and a certain college GPA. And so you can see the different amounts here um, based on um, you know what criteria you may meet there. Rue Advantage, uh, the scholarship that covers your remaining tuition and fees, is also eligible for transfer students. You just have to have an associate's degree, which we talked a little bit about associates earlier, and be Pell eligible in order to qualify for the Rue Advantage scholarship. So again, there's lots of these different ways that you can stack these things on top of each other and find ways to cover significant portions, if not all of your tuition, with the different scholarships that are offered here at UMKC. The second type, before I get into Launchpad, the second type of scholarships that UMKC offers are called competitive scholarships. And they're just like they like the name implies. Um, they're competitive. You're competing against other students for those. And generally, those are going to require an extra step, sometimes multiple extra steps. So it could be submitting a letter of reference or a resume or uploading a video of yourself answering a question or a variety of different things. Um, but at UMKC, we have a scholarship tool that Basically, once you gain admission to the university, you just have to submit one application. It applies you for hundreds of different scholarships that we have out there for students that are competitive. That one general scholarship application pulls in all of your student record information whenever you sign into this scholarship tool and you submit the one general app and it applies you for anything that you could be eligible for. So it's a really quick and easy process for students to, to kind of follow through with. Um, in addition to that, if there's extra steps you have to take after you submit that one general application, then you get notified about what those steps are so that you can take those steps to be considered for those different scholarships. So that's the second type. So we talked about automatics first. If you meet the criteria, you automatically get the money. Competitives require some sort of extra step, usually an application first, and then maybe extra steps after that. And then we have also what are called academic unit scholarships. So certain scholarships for students in certain departments. So I'm the school of business. And so we have school of business scholarships or block school scholarships for students that are interested in coming to study business or accounting. One example of that is Block Launchpad, which is a professional development and leadership program that comes with a scholarship. So basically what we're doing is we're saying students that are interested in Launchpad, um, they need to be ready to get involved in clubs or organizations, come to events, do an internship, do different things that we think are really, really valuable for you to complete while you're in college. And we incentivize you to do those things by giving you a scholarship. And that's what Launchpad is all about. But to kind of give you a little bit more insight into that, I'm gonna show you guys a quick video about Launchpad. Going to college can be a daunting experience. Students wonder, will I make new friends? Will I know how to access the resources available? How will I pay for it? And am I setting myself up to be successful upon graduation? Block Launchpad is Kansas City. Whoops. It's premier undergrad business leadership development program that sets you on a path for success. By being a Launchpad scholar, you'll immediately be part of a community of like-minded students that will become lifelong friends. You'll have access to a career coach and Launchpad staff to help you map out your career and leadership goals. You'll have access to leaders and mentors across the Kansas City business community, allowing you to build your network starting day one at the Block School. You'll have the ability to visit Kansas City's top companies and get your foot in the door early. 
Perhaps most importantly, you'll take part in the Block Internship Experience, working with companies that match your goals and interests. Block grads that completed an internship made almost $10,000 a year more in their first full-time job following graduation compared with those who didn't. Launchpad helps you build your professional toolkit, develop a comprehensive network of leaders and mentors, and puts you ahead of the competition when it's time to graduate so you can start your dream career fast. And it comes with a renewable scholarship. To learn more about Block Launchpad, visit us online. So I'll kind of just reiterate here. So this program is for students, number one, that are wanting to study business or accounting. So they're in one of our two degree programs. Students have to be from Kansas or Missouri, um, which I'm all of you should be. <laughs> and uh, you have to meet certain criteria in order to um, submit the application. And I'll kind of show you what those criteria are here. First and foremost, you have to meet as a high school student, you have to meet these minimum criteria. So you have to have at least a 22 or above on the ACT or you have to have a 3.0 or above high school core GPA. And if you meet either of those criteria and you're admitted to the business school, so you're admitted to the Bachelor of Business Administration or the Bachelor of Science in Accounting, then you're given the option to submit a short essay in response to a question. And so that's what this strong personal statement that you see on the screen there. So it's 500 words or less. We give you three different questions that you can choose from to answer. And so essentially, you're answering a question with about two or three paragraphs at most uh, and, and just kind of, you know, giving your best answer. And, and generally what we do is we go in, we read those, uh, those uh, application submissions or those short essays. And then within a couple of days, we notify students about whether or not they've been selected to the program. And if they're selected to the program, then they get the scholarship that aligns with whatever criteria they meet. So as you can see on the screen here, the lowest level is a $2,000 scholarship for either of these criteria, and the top level is $5,000 a year based on the criteria for ACT or high school core GPA. So these are stackable on top of the other scholarships I talked about earlier. So as an example, if you meet this top level, this impact scholars tier, you get a $5,000 automatic scholarship once you're admitted to the university. And then if you apply to Launchpad and get selected to Launchpad, you get an additional $5,000 scholarship for being a part of Launchpad. So that's 10,000 of your approximately 12 to $13,000 per year, just in two scholarships. In addition to that, say you have something like KC Scholars as an example, and then you get selected to Launchpad. The Launchpad funds are, can actually be refundable to you. So we have some students that are KC Scholars that are here receiving the traditional scholarship, or maybe they're part of the match, and they found ways to have all of their tuition covered with other scholarships, the Launchpad dollars can be refunded to them. So it's kind of like essentially getting paid to go to school sometimes in certain situations. But these are things that you have to have conversations with people that are here to help you or support you. Uh, you need to have those conversations with them. So either myself or Ms. Grendel, we can talk to you about opportunities and where to find them and, and ways to, to pay for college. There's also transfer student scholarships for Launchpad. So if you do decide to go off to another community or to another college or university, uh, a community college maybe be an example, you can transfer to UMKC and still be eligible for Launchpad as well. And these are the different criteria and the different levels of scholarships if you get selected to Launchpad. I do wanna mention the business school has students here that are not in Launchpad. Launchpad is kind of a, an exclusive leadership and professional development program that comes with a scholarship. Many of our students are involved in it, but it's not something you have to do. So I just always want to make that clear to students as well. We have plenty of students that are not in Launchpad, but are still in the business school here studying business or accounting. Next up is support resources. And this is, I think, where we really shine, honestly. Um, the first is my office. So Block Undergraduate Admissions and Recruitment. And really what we focus on is helping every student and family navigate the whole process of getting into the business school here, figuring out how much um, in scholarships that they're going to receive, and then how much maybe that they may need to come up with in addition to their scholarships and how that they would navigate that process. But even beyond that, we get them plugged into advising, which are the folks that uh, help students pick classes every semester. We get you plugged into the Career Center. We have our own dedicated Career Center staff that helps students find internships and part-time and full-time positions. I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. 
um, could be connecting you with another student that you may want to, you know, have a conversation with about what the experience is like or what their class schedule is or, you know, any of those kinds of things. So my office really focuses heavily on getting students connected with the information that they need, but also all the different people and resource offices that are here in the block school to be able to help them be successful. We also have a block graduate programs office. So if you want to go on and do a master's degree, we have an office that helps students navigate that whole process. Um, Ms. Grendel mentioned the MBA earlier. That's our largest program, the Master of Business Administration. But we also have specialized programs in finance, real estate, accounting, and public administration. So if you know for a fact that you want to you know, be a CFO someday, the Master of Science in Finance might be a good option for you because you're just focusing all of your time in your classes on finance types of concepts. So um, all different kinds of master's degrees and the Block Graduate Programs Office is the resource that kind of helps students figure out which, which ones might be the right fit for students. Last but not least are our Career Center statistics. So I mentioned we have our own dedicated Career Center staff. Their sole purpose, and honestly, they're really, really good at this, uh, and they love doing it. They work hard on connecting students with employment opportunities. So that could be internships. Uh, almost all of our internships are paid. Usually students make anywhere from about $15 to $20 an hour to start as an intern with a company that we partner with. Uh, many of our students, by the time they graduate, they make $25 to $35 an hour as an intern working for different companies. Kind of depends on what area of of study that you're going into, uh, what you're earning your degree in, and then also maybe what other types of internships you've done to build up to that higher dollar amount per hour. Uh, but a lot of our students have their job offers going into their senior year of college. And so a big part of that is, again, getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. So that could be, you know, going to a career fair and bringing your resume and having conversations with 30 or 40 employers while you're there. Or it could be stopping by for something that we have called Coffee and Careers, where uh, we have employer partners here, usually about two or three of them every week, where they'll bring coffee and pastries or light breakfast items for students. And students in between classes can just pop into this one kind of common space and have a conversation, an informal conversation with an employer about you know, what does your business do? I've never heard of your business before. Or how do people dress at your company? What what would I wear? Or what types of jobs are available within your company? So all of these kinds of things are conversations that our students have on a daily basis that help build their confidence, help them navigate ways to ask questions to employers that they may not be familiar with. And a lot of these things add up eventually to a student landing a full-time position with a different with it with different companies. Uh, you know, going into their senior year of college. So there's all kinds of opportunities for that. You can see our job placement rates, our average starting salary, highest salary, number of, of employers that we've placed students with, as well as different places around the country that our students go post-graduation. So there's really lots of opportunity here. Um, I know, Ms. Grendel, you mentioned something about international business as an example. One piece of advice I have about international business is that you can study anything that you want and go into international business. You could study finance. There's going to be a need for financial professionals in the international space. Um, you could study marketing. You could study accounting. Any of these things lend well to finding a career in international business. Oftentimes what it comes down to, and this can be said for any of the different emphasis areas or majors or any of that, is the connections that you make outside of class. And so the classes that you're going to take, the 40 classes you're going to take to earn your degree, those are going to be a door opener for you. That's basically going to say you have a certain skill set or you have certain foundational knowledge in business or in accounting, and that can open the door for you. But knowing the person on the other side of the door is what's going to get you invited inside. So the networking component, the talking to others, the exploration making connections, all of those things are what lend to a student's success after they graduate. And those are things oftentimes that not everybody is 100% confident in doing. And so we help students navigate that process through the Career Center as well, through mock interviews, we do resume and cover letter reviews, uh, all different kinds of career-oriented activities to help students prepare, build the confidence to be able to make the connections for after they graduate. So those are kind of all of the different elements to what the experience is going to look like if you're a business school student here at UMKC. 
And so I'll wrap with that. Um, I'll put up my contact information here as well in case any of you want to grab that. Uh, Ms. Grendel also mentioned that the, uh, the presentations tonight are being recorded, so you can always go back and capture this information later as well. But with that said, uh, Ms. Grendel, I'll turn it back over to you and, and let you lead the conversation from here. Thank you so much, Scott. I appreciate you um, sharing all of this information with us, um, especially our students. Um, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to post them in the chat. Um, there's also a Q&A if you'd like it to be kept private, which I totally get. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, while we wait for questions to come through, Scott, I did have one question. For business programs, um, let's say a student, and I know you mentioned being undecided or explorative, Mm -hmm. um, can you also be an undecided student your freshman year at UMKC and take classes within the block school without being a student within the block school? I, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, or... absolutely makes sense. So generally, a student's freshman and sophomore year, they're going to be taking a combination of two things. One is general education courses. So things that sometimes don't have anything to do with business. So natural sciences, fine arts, social sciences, history, speech, composition classes, all of those kinds of things. They also start to take courses like financial and managerial accounting, macro and microeconomics, business law, computer applications. These are courses that you don't have to be a business major to take, but that give you a little bit of exposure maybe to some of these different areas. Uh, I also encourage students if they get a little bit further along in their degree and they don't necessarily know whether or not they want to commit to a business or an accounting degree to just add a business minor and start taking some of those higher level courses because even if they decide that they don't want to be a business major, they'll have that minor then that they can fall back on or at least give them some business acumen as well as some exposure to different business concepts that are a little bit more advanced than maybe freshman and sophomore level courses allow. We also, within our general education course requirements, we have specific block flavored courses that students can take that give them some of that exposure. So um, we have introduction to business as an example, which can be used as an elective. Um, we also have um, a finance course that students can take, a personal finance course. Um, so, so just some different options that are available to students to give them some exposure. Uh, but just keep an open mind, folks. Um, if you don't know what you want to study in college, you are not alone. In fact, the majority of students, almost half students that come in are undecided, or maybe they decide on one thing, but then they change their major later. And so just be comfortable with, um, just try and get comfortable, I guess I should say, with just exploring your options and figuring out, you know, through conversations or experiences or, or advice from people that you trust, uh, you know, what options might be out there and available to you and then go check them out. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. Never be afraid of being undecided when it comes to choosing a college major. That was one of the kind of the traps I forced myself into just out of an ignorance of knowing the opportunities out there. Um, if I'm being honest with myself, I probably would have been better served by changing my college major. I still love what I studied. However, I know if I really took the time to explore other options, I probably could have found something even more fitting for what I want to do um, just within my career and within my personal life. Um, so yeah, never be afraid of, oh, I need to take an elective. Let's see what they got going on over at the block school. Let's see what types of classes I could take. Even if I don't end up pursuing it, it still counts towards my elective or maybe even a gen ed requirement. Um, so as I said earlier, do not be afraid of being just, you know, scaled. And that's mm. usually the times that you find truly what you are most interested in and truly possibly most passionate about. Um, but let's yeah. see. Yeah. yeah. So I don't see any Q&A questions. Um, building off from that, what are some of the, um, just some examples of some classes students can expect to take within the business school? Yeah, so I mentioned some of the ones that are kind of at the freshman and sophomore level, but if you get kind of in the more of the meat of the program, I guess you could say, um, in our business core, as an example, you're going to take advanced analytics, you're going to take supply chain, entrepreneurship, financial management, marketing, business communications, organizational behavior. You're going to have all of these different areas of business. And so 
even when I have conversations with students about how do I choose an emphasis area, because that's a common one, is I don't know what I want to do as my emphasis. And I mentioned that we have about 170 students that are like that. I usually say you're going to get into your business core starting maybe second semester, sophomore year, or first semester, junior year. You're going to start getting some exposure to these other areas of business, and you're going to be able to figure out this is what I like. This is what I'm good at. And then you're going to be able to make a decision from there. And then once you're in your emphasis area courses, so like I'll give some different examples here. If you were to choose uh, health administration as an example, so you want to work in a high level, maybe executive role at a hospital, or you want to work at a small clinic, you're going to take courses like health policy in the United States, financial management issues and health and human services organizations, health and social equity, which I think is extremely important, especially as you compare access to healthcare across different areas of the community that you live in. Um, so those are topics that would be covered in health. Or if you wanna do entrepreneurship, you're gonna take classes like designing the business model, entrepreneurial management and innovation, entrepreneurial finance, um, different things like that. Or if you take, let's do marketing, you're gonna take customer insights, marketing research, social media and mobile, market, mobile marketing, strategic marketing. So you'll see here with the emphasis area courses, you get a lot more specific, but you're also learning little elements that may be, I guess, more broad in nature because social media and mobile marketing is gonna be a little bit different than marketing research as an example. And so you kind of get a little breadth of, of lots of different areas there uh, in the business core and then get more specific once you get into your emphasis area. Does that kind of answer your question? Yes, definitely. Thank you for explaining on that fall though, because there's just, so many different courses you could take within business and it's truly kind of fascinating just seeing the amount of opportunities out there absolutely um yeah well if there are no questions um last call for questions within the chat or the q a feature um just going to give it a minute but yeah well everyone if i don't see any last just hand raises or anything like that I'm going to go ahead and call this to an end. So everyone, thank you so much for um, tuning in tonight. Um, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, I appreciate you following